Hi, Tom. Thank you Hi, for Amanda. joining us today. So let me get to my first question because we don't have much time, but I want to know how important was it for you to have like a female representation in this boss baby movie? It was very important to us, you know, and, and, you know, what kicked off the, uh, the second movie was from the end of the first movie when we had Tim as an a, a adult talking to his daughter about how he met his brother. We had this little baby in a suit wink at the camera and it wasn't a, a to set up a sequel as much as it was to say, Oh, baby core is real to, to the kids in the audience, you know? And so early on um, brainstorming, it was like, well, this character has to be in the movie because the first movie is very boy centric, you know, because there's two petty brothers that were competing with each other. And it just felt like here's an opportunity to have a strong female voice in the movie. And even um, not just a female voice, but um, the voice of a millennial or a Gen Z person, you know, because when you think of who would play against Alec Baldwin's boss, baby, well, you, you don't want someone just as gruff and as petty. You want someone smarter. And Tina was always intended to be the smartest person in the room. And so, you know, rather than, uh, you know, be the madman style business person who's like self-promoting, self-aggrandizing, they thought, oh, she should be a millennial that's more in touch with her feelings and more embracing teamwork. And um, the more we developed the story, she became more important as actually being the centerpiece of the story because she's the one that, uh, you know, uh, brings the brothers back together. So her mantra is, you know, it's not um, the old adage, you know, it's, it's not personal, it's business. We just thought Tina needed to be, it's not business, it's not personal, it's not business, it's personal, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So Amy Sedaris came in and, and helped us create that character, you know, and um, we just thought it was funny, you know, since she hasn't been able to talk for the 15 months she's been waiting for the, the boss baby to show up, that she'd be a little chatterbox. And um, Amy Sedaris is really fun. And you know how great she creates characters with her own TV show and stuff. And so she really helped us define Tina. But we also wanted to have uh, um, Eva's character, Tim's wife, Carol, have a voice. And, and of course, uh, Lisa Goudreau, who had a blast pl playing kind of the uh, overly honest grandmother. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a, a great opportunity for us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. We love Hi, the movie Kevin. in our house. Hi, oh, how good. are you? My, we were over the moon. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think was the biggest challenge filming Boss Baby Family Business? Well, our, um, you know, creatively, it's like, well, is there a story worth telling for a sequel? You know, that's always the biggest challenge. And, um, and you know, family is an ongoing drama. And we just saw, like, there's a B side of the story of, of you know, how you know, sometimes we can disconnect with our family as we get into adulthood and just thought like, that'd be an interesting story to tell uh, with the two brothers who grew up and grew apart and, and have a family, uh, a father daughter story as well. And, um, but I think the biggest challenge um, production wise for us is um, we only had 25% of the movie completed by the time the pandemic hit. And so we all had to work from home. And when Hollywood shut down with live action, we were one of the few movies to continue to, continue to go. And because we had worked together for a year and a half, we became a very tight family, you know, all the artists on the film. And so it was, it was an easy step for us to then, you know, work virtually and have virtual meetings and, and things like that. But I think emotionally, the crew was so invested in telling the story, whether, you know, with the father-daughter story or the the family story, they were very much invested and, and you know, gave their all to, to finish the movie uh, from home, which I'm very proud of and very proud of the team because it was really a labor of love to make this movie. You know, we just saw like, wow, if we can be there for when people start to feel good about going to the movie again and make parents laugh and laugh at ourselves. And it was another driving factor to finishing the movie. It was outstanding. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Hey, Jana. So talk to me a little bit about the choice for Jeff Goldblum as Dr. <laughs> Armstrong. 
Well, I don't want to spoil it, but, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Is, is most people seen the movie, you know? We have, yeah. So we're just, Michael McCullers are kicking around the day of like, who would we get to play the world's smartest baby? And when you think of like, you know, who would play the world's smartest baby? Uh, um, you know, uh, Jeff Goldblum came to mind. And he's so interesting as an actor and as an actor's choices in his timing and delivery and that sort of thing. Uh, fortunately, we pitched him a movie. Um, and, uh, and he wanted to do it. And um, in the room, didn't know how the, his character was going to conclude in the movie and just pitched him an idea. Well, he should learn his lesson and go back to his parents at the end. And Jeff loved that idea. It's like, well, now it's got to be in the movie. But I think, you know, in working with our actors in, in creating these characters, you know, with Jeff, he loved the idea of, of being a school teacher. And so between the lines, he would quiz me on trivia from his past, you know, and I just felt like a dummy in the room because he knew all this trivia and, it, but he really liked the idea of um, his character uh, being a, a baby who was addicted to sugar because he could eat whatever he wanted to. And so he used that idea and, um, and he was a great partner in this. And I think the animators loved animating him because of his unique acting style. You know, he's really interesting. But I could say that for all the actors working with Amy Sedaris is the same, James Marston, Ariana Greenblatt. Um, they all bring that to the table. Thank you. Yeah, he's so funny. It was such a great role. Hi, Mr. Mithgrath. Uh, my Hi, question... Diana. Hi, Micah. Hello. Our question is, with the success of the original Boss Baby movie and your reputation as a Academy Award nominee, did you feel any pressure in directing this anticipated sequel? Um, it's the same pressure you always have, I think, in, in doing anything is like you want to make sure people like it, whether you're doing a painting, a sculpture, a movie. It's like you just you just put your heart and soul into it and hope people like it. And, you know, um, the way we approach the movies is like um, because we don't have a test audience, if it makes us laugh or it moves us, you know, then we feel like we're on the right track you know and um you know i think when you make any kind of piece of art or any kind of anything is really not to to think about what other people would like is is really about um you know what you'd like yourself what means a lot to you how can you put your personal experiences into um anything you do um and hopefully entertain audiences so there's always the pressure of doing a great movie but it's regardless of awards or anything like that at the end of the day, the great reward as a filmmaker is to sit in an audience and, and listen to kids laugh or their parents laugh or, or that sort of thing, you know? Well, a lot of times sequels can't, don't really like match up to the first one, but I think this one did. And I don't, oh, I think, hope so. <laughs> I don't think it'll come off as pressure or anything. So I think audiences will really enjoy. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot because we thank you. put a lot of work into this one and, and you just hope people like it. I think they will. Well, thank you so much. Hi, great film. Thank you. Loved watching it with the family. Hey, Lynette. Uh, hi. So I'd love to know what is it about James Martin that made Marsden, sorry, that made him the perfect person for the role of Tim? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we started to rethink Tim as a character, you know, um, based off, okay, now he's an adult. He's a stay-at-home dad. And, um, and we wanted him to be charming and he was a character that still held on to his childhood. And so who had that youthful kind of na naivete? We play against Alec Baldwin and we wanted these musical numbers um, in the film too, and who can sing. And uh, James Marston immediately came to mind. Um, uh, producer Jeff Herman and I were both fans of um, Enchanted and, uh, and uh, he was also, Tina Fey's uh, boyfriend on 30 Rock, and he made up this song. And, and so luckily with all our cast, including James, he was our first choice and agreed to do it. And, um, and you know, the one moment that was very special to our movies, the father-daughter story, where he takes his daughter through the tour of her imagination and they sing the Cat Stevens song, Sing Out. 
And um, we know early on that was going to be an important part of the movie. And um, James came in and Ariana came in completely prepared and did like one take to sing that song, um, which is really a magical moment for us, you know? And so um, I don't know, Ariana, if we just wanted a really strong um, um, girl and a great actor to play uh, Tabitha and Ariana, you may know her of a baby Gamora from the Avengers movies, <laughs> but um, in her first audition, it was just like, she's Tabitha right away. And I think we feel very fortunate to have all our first choices. And, you know, we rely on our actors to help us create the characters um, as well, as I said before, and, and um, Amy Sedaris and James and Ariana and Jeff, they all uh, brought that with them, you know, in a way. Thank you. Hello again. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> um, I had just a fun little question because I had noticed that you had some acting credits in this movie and the <laughs> last one too, right? So I just wondered how that came about. Was it something always planned or? <laughs> I've done a voice in a lot of um, movies just as a wild line and, and you usually don't cast yourself. It's usually when you're making an animated movie, when you don't have the actors, you step in and throw in a line of dialogue so you can cut it in editorial. And that's how the penguin started in Madagascar. And uh, in the first Boss Baby, I played this Julia Childs type chef. But the, I, and I wasn't gonna be a voice in this one. And the crew actually came to me and said, you gotta be a voice because you're always a voice in the movie. And I go, well, I don't want a big part. If there's one line here or there, I would love to do it. And then, um, and this little character, this girl that was in love with Tim in the school came up where um, she, uh, she says, uh, he's a real bad boy, basically. And she was this gum chewing girl and it just felt like she needed a really raspy voice. So I just kind of stepped in and did that line. So if you watch Tim come out with his Sharpie tattoos and, and try to get sent to the principal's office, she's the little girl that comments on him. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> That's my little cameo. But thanks for asking. Hi again. So I wanted to know, are there any funny anecdotes that you could share with us that happened behind the scenes? Well, behind the scenes was interesting because, um, like I said, you know, we, we made 75% of the movie from home. And... Um, and, uh, and the, the interesting part was the actors had to record from their closets. So it was always interesting to see every actor's closet because when you record in a closet, it, it mutes the echo in the room. And you'd be you know, challenged to find out which, you know, listen to which lines are recorded in their closet and which ones are recorded in a professional studio. So it was interesting to see the actors huddled under a blanket, doing their lines, pretending they're being chased by 100 ninja babies or whatever. And, um, and with Amy Sedaris's case, she was in her apartment and she has a, a rabbit that lives with her that would always be hopping around in the background and that sort of thing. And um, what was interesting about, you know, uh, doing animation dailies with the, um, the artists is their kids would come in and they'd watch the animation. And if they were smiling or laughing, um, it was always a good sign. Uh, you know, we were always joined by people's pets you know, over Zoom or, you know, it was always a family affair. So I think it's those memories we all are dear to us. And it felt like a family making this movie, you know, in a way. That's great. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh, 